Hey guys, so I'm coming to you guys with a quick little pop in before this video starts. I wanted to come to you guys to let you guys know this story time, as you guys can see, it is something that is something that is very touching and emotional for me. But I want to put it out there. I thought about it, I contemplated over and 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 over again. Should I put it out there? <clears throat> but I figure this is me, this is my life because it's so sensitive and um, emotional. That's why I was kind of skeptical about putting it out, but I figured, why not? This is my life, and this is my life. So, um, I recorded this video actually about three months ago, I think. I recorded it around the same time I did my last story time. So, this was pre-recorded about three months ago, but I'm still going to show it to you guys. I decided that I am going to get let you guys know this story time. So, Hope you guys enjoy it make sure you comment below how you feel about my story time and if you have the something similar to my story time but hope you guys enjoy it and I love you guys you are now tuned into Felicia's life hey guys this is Felicia from Felicia's life so I'm coming to you guys to share something that is, of course, very um, personal and different for me to share with you guys. As you guys know, I made a story time video before previously to this. If you guys did not watch that, I'm sure it'll be somewhere on this video where you can click and go check it out. Me being pregnant as a 16 year old, as a teenager. So check that video out. I grew up. That's not the only thing I grew up battling. Um... I also battled with, I was not raised by my mother or my father. Um, my father got deported when I was about six years old. He got deported back to Jamaica. So I am, my nationality, I'm Chinese Jamaican. And um, my mom, she was not active in, well, she was active in my life up until when my grandfather, which is her father, passed, God rest his soul, he passed and she went one way and we went the other way. Meaning my uncle, who's my mom's brother, my cousin's dad, he took in me and my brother. And um, later he um, took in my younger brother that my mom ended up having. And my mom, she suffered from addiction at a very young age, um, a guy, got her wrapped up into it. And if I keep saying, um, I apologize now, because I know that can be annoying sometimes, but this is how I explain my story. So if you don't like it, I don't even know what to say other than listen up. So I'm sharing this story with you guys because I want you guys to know me on a different level before, like I said before my other story time video, I want you guys to know me before me as an adult and how I got this way. Um, so, <clears throat> My mother, she suffered from addiction at a very young age. A guy, one of her boyfriends back then, not my father, um, after my father got her wrapped up on drugs. And my mom had me at a very young age. My mom had me at the age of 13. So you know when you were 13, you didn't have your shit together, period. And um, it's not like this day and age. And my grandparents, they were very, very, um, they spoiled their kids. So, her responsibilities they took on like the old school way they took on her responsibilities and she did not really have to um i guess be in the house and focus on that because she was 13 and uh, at the time and she had then she later had my brother at 16 and then i think my other brother at like 21 and um but yeah so my um when my grandfather died we went separate ways my uncle took us and my mom went out to the streets. She turned to the streets. And I grew up as a, a good childhood. I didn't want for anything. My uncle, he supplied the person. Well, my uncle, I call him my stepdad. He supplied er, plot, supplied us with pretty much everything we needed um, and, and more. That's why if you ever hear me, my cousin Brandis, who's a vlogger on here, we call each other sister cousins because she's like my sister, but she's my first cousin because we grew up in the same household for a certain period of time. Um, and um, we're really close. We're like sisters. And um, 
growing up, I really did miss my mom. I'm very good at, I think that's why I'm so good at suppressing certain things and just dismissing it and never thinking about it again. Growing up without my mother was something very, very tough for me, but I did have a uncle and aunt, the woman that he ended up marrying throughout my entire um, years almost before he and my aunt, who is Brandon's mom, divorced. And the woman after her, she was with me for pretty much the entire time I was in the household until I left. 17, she was still there. Cause I moved my uncle at about the age of, I wanna say seven or eight. Um, and I lived with him until I was 17. And I moved out. Um, he treated us very well. He was very strict. He was like a military drill sergeant. And I guess that's maybe the reason why I am the way that I am. Because if it wasn't for that structure, there's no way in hell. I think I would have turned out this way because I, I'm a different breed and I'm very, um, what's the word? I do whatever the hell I want to do and utmost to, I guess, to put in a nutshell. And um, so growing up without my mom or my father, my father got deported and I've never heard from him again. I don't know if he does not know how to contact me. I know over there in Jamaica, it is like the hardest thing to try to contact people. And due to my mom being 13, I, she did not know any of his family. So. But she only knew his brother, but by this time, when I'm grown now, I'm trying to search for everybody. Time has gone by because I'm gonna be 30. And from that time lapse, everything has changed. So I really don't know um, how to get in contact with any of his family. So to this day, I'm now going on 30. The last time I saw my father was, I was about six years old, six, five, something like that. I can recall it was my birthday and he got me a cake. I went to a park. He put the cake on the roof of the car and he drove off with the cake on the roof. It's a funny story, but that's the last memory. That's the only memory that I have of my father. And um, for what I understand, he was a very, very type of, he was very like active father. So that's why it's kind of weird for me to understand that he wouldn't look for me. My name is very rare, Felicia Chin and spelled the way that it is, but I found out that it is someone else that has my name, but she's totally Chinese and I am clearly black Chinese. But um, yeah, so I haven't heard from my dad at all and I'm hoping one day to be re reunited with him. Hopefully maybe somebody that sees this video, they can, they'll link us up or something. His name is David Chen, let me throw that out there. And like I said, um, growing up without my mom, and my father was very tough on me. My stepmom, who are, who's my aunt, but I call her my stepmom, growing up, she was a great woman to me. She showed me so many things. And um, she showed me a lot of things to make me also the woman that I am today. So I gotta give her credit when it's due. And my uncle, of course, they are the reason for, for how I turned out. And um, I'm blessed to have not fell within the system because of my mom you know, going, turning to the streets. So I, pretty much my entire childhood, teenage life, I did not have my mother or my father. And now as my adult life, I still don't have my father. But my mom has been clean for about seven to eight years. And I am so thankful. Come in, it's my daughter. I'm so thankful because there's a lot of people that never come from addiction that has had it their entire life. My mom is not ashamed. Hell, I'm not ashamed because it's her testimony. And she has helped and inspired so many people with her story. So if you ask her, she's going to tell you up front. You don't even have to ask her. She'll tell you her life struggles because she's not ashamed. It's her story. So how can she be ashamed? Because look at her now. My mom is doing so good. She's doing better than half people that don't eat, that didn't even have an addiction. So I'm so happy. I'm so happy to have her as my mom. And even back then, there was never no, any type, type of thing that I hated her or I resented her or my brothers because I'm an only girl of five brothers. Yes. Yeah. I'm so blessed to have her as a mom because she is a phenomenal mom. She's a phenomenal grandma. She supports me and my children in everything that we do. Oh my God. I think that this is exactly how my story was meant to be written because I used to ask myself like, oh my God, why me, why me? I used to always question God on why me, how come me, 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 all the things that I went through in my life that you guys probably will see in another story time. But why me, why me? And I just say now, I finally realized at the age of 29 that 
this is just my story and he gives his hardest task to the strongest warriors and I tell you I tell you I always just ask how strong do you want me to be and I have my story I speak it anytime and no one ever believes half of the stuff that I tell them that I've been through but yeah as a teenager as a in, let's just I guess we're gonna piggyback on my prior story time video as a teenage mom and my mom of course was a teenage mom I wanted my mother there I don't know if anyone out there they're a teenage mom or when you go through any type of pregnancy you want your mother to be active even though I had my stepmother and my cousin Brandis was right there by my side which I'm so thankful for but nothing can substitute for you having your mother there and even as I think about it growing up I I used to hate when I heard people say oh my mom this and that and because I'm a teenage mom I used to always say oh I I hated growing up hearing you know um, stories of I knew some other girls that was at the school that I went to back then say oh my mom this and that she was this and that this and that and I'm just like you know I had that substitute in my life I wanted that and there is no way in hell I was gonna get that my mom because she was not at that level yet but um, and that was for my teen pregnancy I yearned for that I wanted that so bad and it was so tough being at home half of the time growing up in my childhood wondering is my mom alive is my mom dead is my mom because my mom she came in our life in and out um she, but she brought gifts every time she came in our life which was we were happy about and we cherished them but you know that was i think that was her way of connecting with us because sometimes parents go or family members go out on addiction and they never come back. So she still had a caring heart, but it was like the drugs were taking, was, was taking over her life. And um, right now, like I said, my mom's clean. She, um, she's a phenomenal grandma, oh my God. She was there throughout my entire pregnancy. Well, I had Milani early and she was, she had planned her trip to come down and everything. And she was upset that I had her so early, but it was nothing I can do. Like. It was nothing I can do. And she comes down. She came down when once I had the baby. She stayed for a month. Then every every two months she came down for it for three weeks to um come and help us out and pitch in. She helps out so much. She doesn't miss an event. She does not miss anything. So that's the main reason why I vlog also because my mom, she does not live down here anymore. She moved to Jacksonville with her husband. Yes, yeah, she's married now. And um, so she gets to see everything that goes on in my life that she sends packages, she sends that, she sends this. She's active. I talk to my mom every single day. There is not a time that I don't speak to my mom. And everybody always say, oh my God, I hope, I, I wish I had the relationship you and your mom have, blah, 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 you have a great relationship. I tell them, but you gotta understand, when you guys did have that relationship with your mom as a young adult, I didn't. So now as an adult, me and my mom, of course, we understand each other, we're grown. So we didn't have that, oh no, I hate you, mom. Ah, you're telling me what to do. I think you're the meanest bitch in the world or whatever. Now saying I'm gonna call my mom a bitch, but you know how y'all girls or us girls are when we're younger. But I didn't have that, that, type of barrier within our relationship so I think I'm gonna say honestly I think that she came in my life at the perfect time because I'm so blessed for the childhood that I grew up with I tell you no lie like I'm blessed I was blessed I am blessed so um yeah so I battled with that as it um with addiction with my mom uh, my entire pretty much my entire life until I was my mom got clean when I was an adult when I had, I had already had my second child, um, but she was here, she was totally clean the full time through me being pregnant with my daughter and after now. So, um, yeah. So if you are battling with addiction or your parents battle with addiction and you're ashamed of it, you don't like to share that story with people you should because my mom is not ashamed. Hell, I'm not ashamed at all because some people never get over it. And because my mom was addicted, 
was addicted as a young child and all the way up to she was an adult. And she came out of it strong. When I tell you strong, my mom is strong. And I'm proud of her. I will always be proud of her. I am thankful to have such a strong woman that gave birth to me. She may have not raised me to a certain, she raised me up to a point where I'm still a child, but to the point after that, I don't even know. I'm just thankful to have her as much. She would never know just how blessed and thankful and proud of her I am. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my story of um, my mom being on drugs as a child and a young adult. So she did not raise any of my brothers. I have five brothers. We don't have the same father. Um, two of them have the same father, but I'm the oldest and I'm the only girl. I'm her first daughter. I was my dad's first child also. Um, so I don't know, I probably have some siblings out there and if you are, you know, you think you might be related, slide in my DM or comment down below so, you can, so we can link up and we can let each other know. But yeah. I don't know what else to even say other than that. Um, if you guys have any additional questions, let me know. Um, and it's it, another reason what I want to put out there. But um, I want to put out there that I speak to my mom every single day, not only because of this, but I just want to put this out there. My mom, when I found out a few years ago that she has lupus, and my aunt, who's her sister, died of lupus back then when I was living with my mom when I was a young girl um, because we didn't have the technology that we have today. So my aunt died at the age of 21 and my mom has lupus and one of my cousins have lupus. So it's like lupus runs in my family. So that's another scare. I know my mom, she takes very good care of herself. She takes all her medication. She does everything she needs to do. That's something that scares me a lot. Not saying that she's gonna die from it or whatever. But that's something that scares me because I didn't have her at one point in my life. And if something was to happen to her, I know every day we live to die. I mean, I know we live to die, but if I don't know what I'll do because me and my mom, I have best friends and I'm really close to my cousin, but no one, when I say no one, not one person, any of my close people, they can't come close to the bond that me and my mom share. None, none of my best friends. No, none of that. It, it is not even comparable. So if something was to happen to my mom, I'm smiling, but it's like a coping mechanism that I'm using because I'm trying not to cry. If something was to happen to my mother, I don't know how I would even function. Yeah, I was not intended. I was not trying to get emotional at all, but um, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. I don't even want to get into that. I don't even want to talk about that. but. Me growing up with my mom having addiction, it was really, really tough because I always wanted to be with my mother. But I pray to God, I mean, I, I thank God every day that she did not take us along with her. Because my mom, that's when, that's when I go back to she's strong because my mom, she had the opportunity to take us with her and bring us down that road with her. But she gave us to my uncle and she opted for us to go with family. And I'm so thankful that we had family that we did not have to go within the system and we grew up with a great lifestyle. Um, in regards to my brothers, three of us was with my uncle, my mom's brother. One of my brothers went with his father at the time, well still, his father and his grandparents on his father's side. And one of my brothers went with um, our aunt that lives out of town and another one of my brothers went with um, his dad's kid's mother at the time but his dad died so he was with them so we all went with them family 
and we're truly blessed. So I apologize for getting emotional. I really did not want to. I'm really not the type of person that get emotional. I'm pretty sure you guys could see even from a vlog prior that when my mom left, when she comes down, she'll be down for my birthday, um, my 30th birthday. If she leaves, I'm always emotional. I even cried on camera um, on that vlog. I, I just hate it. But um, yeah, I'm gonna end this video with um, if you have parents or you had parents that suffered from addiction but is still suffering from addiction, never give up on them because you never know. You never know what that person, your parents went through as a child to draw them to addiction and never give up on them and never use that as a reason to blame them because getting addicted to food is one thing. It's an addiction. Getting, even people in love, they're addicted to the wrong person. But drug addiction is something that literally takes over your mind and you're not even thinking clearly. Trust me, I know. I've been in drug court. I worked in drug court, not even trying to go down that road. But I know you cannot blame them because when you, I know they made the decision to do drugs, but when you're young, as my mom was, you date the older guy, you get mine. What's the word? They erase your mind. They take over your mind. And guess what? That addiction is a mother. So never blame them. Just be there for them. And if they never come around, they just never come around. Don't blame yourself. Just know that you supported them and you are not. Don't make them feel bad because it's already bad enough that they're out there and they're doing that. And um, yeah, my mom is a phenomenal mom. So, and I have to keep saying that because she's phenomenal, even with her flaws. So that's how you know it's true love because with my mom's flaws and everything she's done, I love her with all of my heart, as you guys can see. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a story time video, so a lot of you may not be subscribed to my channel, my family vlog. So if you want to see my lifestyle, of course, every day, go ahead and check out my vlogging channel. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do want to know anything additional, like I said before, link it down below. I'll let you guys know. So at first, if it's not positive or it's not something that you're trying to, don't be negative in my comment section because I hate, I hate to go there, you know? I hate to go there because this is a personal and family issue and I'm sharing it with you guys so that I can help somebody, help people and let you guys know my story. But if someone happens, I'm just going to give you a disclaimer now. I will come for you. Don't. And I know we might be over the internet or whatever, but that don't stop me. Don't test me. Alright? So I love you guys and I hope you guys can understand where I am coming from. And if you don't, it still happened in my life. Love you guys. So for all my negative comments, this shirt is for you. Not interested. And God damn it, I mean it. And I'm out.